Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to start talking about gradient descent. But before we look at any formulas or formal definitions, I want to show this visually because I think it will help your understanding with gradient descent. Okay, so over here, this is a 3D surface loss versus W1 and W2 graph. So this is a loss plot, essentially. What does that mean? Well, it means that I took all the possible W1 and W2 combinations from negative 20 to positive 20. What does that mean? Essentially, it means that for our neural network, for W1 and W2, I looked at all the possible combinations for W1 all the way from negative 20 to 20, and for W2 all the way from negative 20 to positive 20, and then that shows us the loss. Now, this might be a little confusing, so let's look at the graph. So for example, we have this point over here. At this point, when W1 is negative 13, and when W2 is negative 12.7, the loss is 49,000. That's a pretty big loss. So I hope you understand what this uh, plot is doing. It's essentially plotting all the possible W1 and W2 combinations from negative 20 to positive 20. So when W1 and W2 can pick any value from negative 20 to positive 20, and for example, over here, this top, we have W1 is 20 and W2 is 20. And when this is the case, the loss is 304,000, okay? At this point over here, when W1 is negative 13.9 and W2 is 15.15, the loss is 97,000, okay? So what are the two dots? Well, this first dot is when W1 is equal to 2 and W2 is equal to 0 0.5 and we get a loss of 162. And remember, these were the original weights of our neural network. Remember, we initialized our network with a W1 equals to two and W2 equals to 0 0.5. And when we did this, we got a loss of 162. Now, if you don't remember that, let's scroll all the way up. And remember, when our input was X equals two and the initial weights for W1 was two, and for W2, it was 0 0.5. And if we do the mean squared error loss calculation over here, and we plugged in the values, remember, we got that the initial loss was 162, okay? Now, what is this other red dot? Well, this other red dot is the ideal solution. When W1 is equal to 3.391, and W2 is equal to 2.949, then the loss is zero. Well, you see that 6.962N, N stands for nano. It means it's such a small value. It is uh, essentially zero. So in order for you to better understand, you know, this, what is that W1 equals to 3.391 and W2 equals 2.949? Well, if we scroll down all the way, um, let's scroll some more um, here. Remember, when the target y equals 20, and remember, we just got these values from the graph. When w1 is equal to 3.391 and w2 is equal to 2.949, our predicted output is going to be 2 times w1 times w2, and we get that our output is 20.000118. And our target is y equals 20. So with these weight combinations, we got the correct answer, okay? So this is essentially what gradient descent with the partial derivatives and backpropagation is doing. Its, its goal is to minimize the loss function. Now, the goal of gradient descent is to get from this red point to this red point, okay? And as a matter of fact, our first random guess when we initialized our neural network to have w1 of 2 and w2 of 0 0.5 did actually pretty well because as you can see it's pretty close to the ideal solution oftentimes neural networks you'll see that you know you have weights over here and the ideal solution would be over here but one thing for you to understand an actual neural network has millions of weights so we cannot visualize um, the human brain cannot comprehend above three dimensions. 
So this three dimension is what we can still visualize as humans, where we have W1 on one axis, W2 on another axis, and then we have the loss function, okay? So as you can see, what gradient descent will try to do is get from this point to this point. Now, let's zoom in a little, okay? So as you can see, now the difference is a lot more clear. You see that we start over here with W1 is two and W2 is 0 0.5 and we try to find the minima. We try to go down the hill. If you've, you know, learned about gradient descent before, you know, oftentimes an analogy is that you roll a ball and it will try to get to the minimum value. <clears throat> and this is exactly what you see over here. As you can see, when we get W1 and W2 over here at that red dot, the loss is essentially zero compared to over here when the loss is 162. So gradient descent is going to use backpropagation to get from here all the way down here. Now, how does it do that? Remember, gradient descent is an iterative process. So essentially, it's like putting, putting backpropagation in a for loop. And this is what's going to happen. At W1 equals 2 and W2 0 0.5, you have the loss equal to 162. After the first weight update, we update the weights and we're going to get this value. W1 is 2.18 and W2 is 1.220. And as you can see, the loss decreased to 107.763. Then after the next weight update, we're gonna come over here. As you can see, the loss decreased. As you can see over here, the loss again decreased and now the loss is at 17 compared to the original 162. And, and uh, Something with gradient descent that you'll often see is at first, it's gonna take big steps, and then you'll see that the steps are getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the way until we're here at the ideal solution where the loss is zero. And we're gonna talk about why these steps become increasingly smaller. So for example, the distance between this, these two points is a lot greater than the distance between, for example, this point and this point, or all, all these points over here. You see there are multiple points uh, over here. So that's actually um, very unique to gradient descent and it happens uh, often with gradient descent. Okay, so I hope this helps with the explanation of gradient descent as to what it's trying to do. Essentially, it's going to update the weights W1 and W2 in order to find the minimum loss, okay? And one thing to note is that oftentimes gradient descent can have multiple answers. So over here, we found that this, over here, the loss is equal to zero. But if we went this way, we could also find something really close to zero. So when W1 is equal to 5.5 and W2 is 1.8, you see that the loss is 0 0.01. So, you know, you can also find something over here that matches um, a loss of, of zero. So gradient descent doesn't necessarily have one uh, good answer. So as you can see, the losses over here are somewhere over here are exactly zero and they're also exactly zero over here. That means we can have more than one combination. So the ideal value of W1 and W2 could be 3.381 or, you know, not that over here. So around these values, but the ideal values for W1 and W2 could also be somewhere over here when, you know, W1 is around five and W2 is around two. Okay, so that's also something that you need to know with gradient descent is it doesn't necessarily have, you know, one good solution. So neural networks don't necessarily have one good solution, but gradient descent will find a good solution, but there can be more than one solution. So there can be another W1, W2 weight pair that also minimizes the loss. It just depends, you know, where we initialize the weights and some other parameters, you know, gradient descent could have very well have started off this way and converged um, over here, but it decided to go this way. So this is um, not something that we're gonna, you know, discuss in detail, but I just wanted to let you know that with gradient descent, um, you know, there can be more than one good answer
for your W1 and W2 in your neural network. And in more complex neural network where you have, you know, millions of parameters, there isn't necessarily always going to be one right answer, but gradient descent is going to find a good answer. Um, and then there are other cases, other shortcomings of gradient descent, like, you know, local versus global minima, but I'm getting ahead of myself and we'll discuss those later. So I will see you in the next video.